This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a couple of weeks. We've we've had to do some things. Life I'm sorry, I just keep laughing. I don't know if people can hear it on the recording, but there's a dog barking in the background. <laughs> and our special guest, a dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Pixie, by the way. Oh, uh, Pixie, our special guest, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and and believe me, after after the week some of us have had, oh ho oh, oh, ho, we need we needed that bit of a break in laughter with the laughter. And oh, yeah. what we're talking about today is, is relatively lighter than some of the other stuff going on in the world, which I'm going to save up for the next thespian talk because it's that important plus it just literally happened for us so just give it a little bit of time to stew but um but as you may or may not know if this is your first time i am gomer the ranting thespian your wonderful host who is still got a belly and my co-host is holly christine <laughs> hello and our new co-host our new regular co-host gonzo link hello so yes this is the official announcement part of the show where Gonzo Link is going to be our regular co-host from here on it is going to be awesome. Happy to be here, Gomer. Yes. Hey, Holly. Uh, we are happy to have you. Now, what we are going to be looking at today uh, comes out of Nebraska. You know, oh bullying is, is, is a serious issue, very, very serious issue, and there are plenty of ways to deal with bullies. Um, you know, you could tell an adult, you go to the press if the adults aren't doing anything, you go to the police, you know, different things. And if none of that works, then you beat the crap out of them. That's how I tend to do it. There's there's a chain of events there. And, and keep note that beating the crap out of them is typically reserved for last. Now, if they're beating you and your life is in danger, then, you know, unleash hell. But beyond that, you have that little escalating thing. However... We found this article on Jezebel, Jezebel.com, entitled, Nebraska School Gives Most Idiotic Advice Ever to Deal with Bullies. And, this is absolutely ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. And this school out in Lincoln, Nebraska, I think it's a Zeman Elementary School, <laughs> sent fifth graders home with the flyer that that's supposed to help them deal with bullies in their school. It's a list of nine rules. And, Nine of the worst things you could ever tell a kid. Yes. To, and, to know how to deal with a bully. Yes. And, and you know what's really bad? There's at least one of them in here that I can see working for some people. That's what gets me. It's like, okay, one of them is this. Uh, some people could do it. And, and I, I've, I've, known, I've known of people that have been able to deal with this. That's how they cope. You know, that, that's semi-legitimate. It's not one that would work for everybody, unfortunately. And I'll, I'll let you know which one that is when we get there. Uh, so it's just to go right off. Rule number one, refuse to get mad. Mm -mm. Anger is a feeling we have toward our enemies, not our buddies. When you get angry, you're treating them like they are an enemy. Besides, if a bully finds out he or she can get you angry, you become their puppet and the bully controls you. I don't know. I've been angry towards friends. I've had friends angry towards me. We're yeah, still friends. Yes. I don't understand what Anger's... world these people live in if people don't get angry at their friends ever. I know. It's like, what the hell? <sighs> yeah, anger is a perfectly legitimate uh, emotion to feel. I mean, even if you are friends with somebody, I mean, if you are in someone that's, that's making you mad, you tell them that you don't like it. Yeah. You let them know. It upsets you. Although, I will say that... Um, I, I, I mean, this was something that I was told as a kid, uh, and how to deal with with bullies was, you know, don't don't let on that they're making you upset. And I don't know. I mean, I, I think there there could be some truth in that, but also, I actually read on a post on Tumblr that talked about um, uh, the performance artist Marina Ab Abramovich, who did this uh, this piece of performance art where she stood in front of a table full of implements of like uh there were like flower uh, flowers uh feathers a knife a loaded gun actually oh, and she let she let the people there do 
whatever she, they wanted with her. And she just stood absolutely still for six hours. And it started out very sort of mild where they were like sort of tickling her with feathers or like moving her hands up to her face or whatever. And then they started poking her with thorns and like cutting her neck and like licking the blood. And then one person like loaded the gun, pointed it at her head and then put her finger on the trigger. Oh, Jeebus. Yeah. So just doing nothing allows people to be kind of assholes. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. I mean, and, and and you know what? I've been told the same thing in school. It's like you, if you ignore them, they go away. And in some cases, maybe it'll work. Maybe is the key word there. But not all of them. You know, if, if somebody is bullying you, and, 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 you know, we do mean bullying in this case. You know, you just yeah. you, you go to an adult. You go tell somebody. And if you're angry about it, that's fine. You're allowed to be angry because this yeah. person's being an asshole, and that really pisses me off. Oh. Rule number two. So, hmm? Oh, oh, I was just saying that, yeah, uh, it, it's it's like one of those things that could could work, and if it doesn't, go tell an adult. Yeah. Yeah, because well, it's like – I don't know if anybody else has ever had this happen to them, but like when you're – trying to get a reaction out of someone and they don't get mad sometimes that can just make the bully more frustrated and it's like great so in a way you are potentially inviting more problems for yourself by not reacting at all yeah that's one of those it's kind of a crapshoot you know it could work against you it could work for you it's not an end-all be-all solution Uh, so rule number two Treat the person who is being mean as if they are trying to help you. No matter how insulting or mean they may sound, be grateful and think that be grateful and think they really care about you. This does not mean you have to believe what they tell you. Right. Uh, how I, even? I, I, I am I'm reminded of a passage in Tim Allen's first book, Don't Stand Too Close to a Naked Man, where he talks a little bit about bullies in school you know he was bullied a little bit growing up and one of the things i don't remember exactly what had happened but i but it was a hypothetical situation anyway so what it what had happened was you know you know the bullies were sitting there and you're left there rubbing your ass and muttering character building my ass yeah which i i'm that's the sense i'm getting from this rule it's like they're trying to help you it's character building no yeah no, 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 no. Character building is, is having a drill sergeant for a, for, for a gym teacher and having to run through the tires five times in, in an hour. You know, that, and even then, that's borderline not character building. There are different ways to character build without result, resorting to being bullied or bullying somebody else. There are other ways to do it. Ex- and, uh, yeah, it just makes me think of like – you know, grade school bullying. Oh no, this person has cooties. Oh well, thank you for informing me. I have cooties. I will have this problem taken care of as soon as possible. Like, <laughs> in in what way can you really actually act like that's helpful information? Yeah, it's 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 just, okay. What what are cooties? It's what you have. What do I do about it? I don't, I don't know. You have to get the cootie shot. You, re- I remember the cootie shot. It was like. It was like yeah, the the circle, shot. circle, dot, dot. Now you have the cootie shot. It, uh. It's the stupidest thing ever. And it's like, it's, it's like, I look back now and it's like, what the fuck? What were we thinking? Yeah. Oh, oh no, yeah. I'm safe because you poked me. Yes. Cool. <laughs> yeah. The thing about this one is, I actually, I could kind of see where they're coming from on it. I mean, but by, by saying like, like, oh, well, you have your coo- you have cooties, you're gay or something, and it's just. Like then, he's like, "Oh well, thank you for you know letting me know that or or whatever," and and then just sort of like getting the bully confused, and then like being like, "Oh, this person's not worth it. They're just taking it as a compliment." But I I I don't want to you know undersell the intelligence of kids or anything, but I don't think kids at this point fully understand or appreciate irony. Yeah. So this just this just wouldn't work. I mean, how how are they supposed to handle this? Yeah, well, uh, this was, like, fifth graders, right? Mm -hmm. This was given to fifth graders? Yeah, so it's like, uh, you know, I don't think that they're really going to get it. (laughs) No, No, because... And I don't say that because I think kids aren't smart. It's just, like, I was a 10-year-old smartass, 
Like, and I, I can tell you that if I had reacted that way to my classmates, they would have been like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would, well, my fifth grade year was spent between Wyoming and Texas, so... <laughs> So if I had tried that similar, if I had tried that, I probably would have. They brought, they probably would have reacted the same way and then beat the crap out of me for confusing them. Ah <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and it's like I can, I confuse. I did this on accident once. I didn't get my ass kicked, but I confused kids on accident because for whatever reason we all got like things of deodorant or whatever. I think it was because summer was coming or what have you. And for whatever reason, I could not think of the word deodorant to describe it, so I called it the called it antiperspirant. Which is still technically true. Right. And every every kid around me is like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's technically right, just not the word they're used to. Oh, so oh, yeah. rule number three. Do not be afraid. Fear is something we feel toward enemies, not buddies. When you are afraid, you are treating the bully like an enemy. If you are afraid, you ought to... I, I, and I just noticed this. I've got to stop. If you afraid. If you who, afraid. Who wrote this out? Uh, where was the editor? Obviously a well educated. Obviously a well educated individual. From Nebraska. From Nebraska. With corn in the brain. Sorry to anybody from Nebraska. <laughs> I'm just sorry they live in Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> I, and you know what? I've been through Nebraska. It's a beautiful country. Apparently, some of the people are bug fucking stupid. Uh, so if you're afraid, you are automatically putting the bully in the stronger position, and you automatically lose. Since and since the bully wants to keep winning, they will continue doing things to make you feel afraid. Um, being afraid is not the problem. Showing the fear, okay, you can suggest somebody to not show your fear. That's perfectly legitimate. But if you are afraid, go tell an adult. You know, go 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 to it. Say, hey, you know what? This guy is making me scared, and I need you to deal with him. And if and again, it goes back to my whole chain of you know events there. If if you exhaust every other resource and he's still bullying you and he's still making you afraid, then yeah, it'll be tough. Easier said than done, I do understand. Swallow your fear and beat the crap out of him. <laughs> so again, yeah. I understand. Easier said than done. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, like the first three num uh, items on this list and like one more on, on here, I could really see where they're coming from and where they're trying to offer kids some useful advice, even if it is very misguided. Um, and, and this one, like, yeah, like you said, try not to let on your fear because that does kind of, it, it does give bullies more sort of a, a cause to, to want to, to fuck with you because then they know that they're getting the reaction that they kind of want and they're getting sort of into a dominant position. But just saying don't be afraid is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Oh, rule number four. Do not verbally defend yourself. We defend ourselves from enemies, so we are treating the other person as an enemy, not a friend. Well, I don't know how many friends that I've had that would gleefully throw me into the garbage can and lock me in a locker. I mean, I, yeah, I'm you're sorry. not my friend after that. No, you, you've you've revo you've lost your privileges to be my friend after that point. Yeah, yeah. you you are at the most neutral to me, if not an enemy. Hmm. Yeah. When one person attacks and the other person is the defender, the attacker is in the stronger position, so the defender is automatically the loser. If we defend, we lose. I don't know. Have you seen an ant try to take on a tank? Uh... By that logic, the ant should win against the tank. Not gonna work. Because you, you, ant goes up, dink, and tank goes squish. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if if you defend yourself, you lose. Um, that's a great lesson to teach kids, isn't it? Right. Don't ever yeah. try and stand up for yourself. Don't oh, no. stand up for yourself. That's ridiculous. Just take it like a man and uh, go home and cry. 
Self-defense is for losers. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, this does say do not verbally defend yourself. So, what, you're just supposed to keep quiet? You could be – they could be saying all sorts of horrible things about you, your mother, your family, your girlfriend or boyfriend or, or how, whoever else, and you're just supposed to sit there and take it and not call them out on it? Uh-uh. No. Well, then what are you supposed to do? You're, you're gonna, supposed to hit him or something? <sighs> well, no, because that, that brings us to rule number five. Which is... Do not attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We attack... Don't do anything, kids. Just yeah. sit there and let them wail on you. Yeah. We attack enemies, not friends. If I attack you back, I am treating you like an enemy, so the bully will in return treat you like an enemy. It takes two people to fight, so it's the person who retaliates who, or responds who actually starts the fight. Whether or not you see the bully is the one starting the fight or the person who retaliates starting the fight, if it gets to a point, fighting is going to happen eventually if it is not dealt with. And yeah, uh, again… Going back to the, you know, being gleefully tossed into the garbage can example. Yeah, um, at that point, the bully is technically an enemy. So feel free to attack back in some way, shape, or form. Again, going back to the chain of commands, attacking can also mean going to the authorities. You know, yeah. there, there's a way to attack back. And if the authorities don't do anything, you go to your parents or vice versa, whichever way. I, I guess they could be all rolled into one. If they don't if, if the school authorities don't do it, go to the superintendent. If the superintendent doesn't do anything, you go to the police. If the police don't do anything, you go to the fucking media. And if the media doesn't do, – or if the media does something and it's not effective, then the next time they try and beat the shit out of you, you fight back. Yeah, seriously. Like, you, you, like I, I, and again, I, I this, this is the other one that I, I, I kind of see where they're coming from by saying, like, you know, don't it, – it's like sort of a – giving them more reason to want to, to mess with you by by attacking them and giving them sort of the reaction that they want. But again, like, if if everything that you've done up to that point hasn't worked and they're still giving you crap, then you should have every right to defend yourself, even if yeah. that means throwing a punch. Yeah. Take or like, body take... slamming somebody on the pavement. <laughs> oh, Like, don't slam. instigate something. But, yeah. it, like, if something happens, don't just sit there and take it. Like, you have every right to defend yourself. Yes. You know, and the rule in my house growing up was you shouldn't get in a fight and you damn well better not start one. But if you're in one, you better fucking finish it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, you will end that fight. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, yeah, fighting is against school rules. But you know what? You defended yourself. You you weren't going to take any more. And, and you have the respect for that. And so at the yeah. very least. Oh, rule number six. If someone physically hurts you, just show you are hurt. Do not get angry. Right, because that's not going to invite all sorts of teasing. Oh, I know, right? Ugh. If someone hurts you, you want them to feel sorry and apologize. If you get angry, they won't feel sorry. Bullshit! Oh, my. I, I do believe that my arm is bending at a very awkward angle. That, that, that's not right. That's not supposed to happen. Why, why did you do that? Because I thought your arm would look funny that way. Well, it it doesn't. I mean, it kind of hurts, you know. I mean, I'm I'm actually in a very excruciating amount of pain, but I'm I'm not letting it on because you know I'm better than that. Well, then I guess you won't mind <sighs> if I do it to your other arm. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my! That that was not nice of you. Why, why, why would you do that? I I just no. I'm I'm hurting now again, even more. I'm actually about to pass out. Wow. Oh, I, I, no, think I, I think what, what you done. mean is, oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, you're right. My <laughs> arm does look so hilarious that way. Uh -huh. Oh, I didn't see it that way before, but I totally get it now. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 oh, my God. They are sending mixed messages. I just I just realized that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. And it's like, you want to do something? You, you did. Just, and, and the whole line, if you get angry, they won't feel sorry. Bullshit. I, I, you know, even not dealing with bullies, just I've had people get angry at me and call me out for shit that, well, honestly, I needed to be called out on. And it's like, oh, shit, I was wrong. I wronged this person and I apologized. They got angry with me and I felt sorry and I apologized. 
Yes, because again, anger is a perfectly legitimate emotion if you're if you're given proper circumstance and probable cause. Because, I mean, people shouldn't do shit like that. I mean, people, you know, if if someone physically hurts you or does something that you find to be very not all right, you should be well within your rights to call them out on it. Yeah. And if they try, and if they get defensive and pissy about it, well, then maybe you just need to stop spending time with them, or at least as much time. Yeah, avoid them as much as possible. Uh, rule number seven, do not tell on bullies. What? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, worst advice ever. Yeah. Just don't bring your shit to us, kids. Just go work it out. Just do something. Don't, 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 don't fight. Don't fight. Although, if, if he does fight you and break your arm, thank him for it. Mm-hmm. The number one reason bullies hate their victims is because the victims tell on them. Telling makes the bully want to retaliate. Tell an adult only when a real injury or crime, such as theft of something valuable, has occurred. Would we keep our friends if we tattled on them? Yes, we would. Or at least the one, at least your good friends. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, apparently, I... kids, harassment isn't a crime. Yeah. Oh, no. And and neither is getting the uh, you know the the occasional purple nurple. You know, I mean, that, that's apparently not a crime. I mean, it, it, it's, it's really, really, don't tell them. Yeah, it's not like it's assault or anything, Gomer, jeez. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, I I just, I, I I really, I took a double take at this one because I just, I, I can't believe it. And I, the thing is, it is demonstrably wrong, and I can prove it because I had uh, bullying problems, not, not, not insanely bad bullying problems uh, growing up, but... Um, when I was a freshman in high school, I had uh, this small group of, of kids who were kind of picking on me, and there was one in particular who was really bad about it and kept kind of harassing me. So what I did was I went to the vice principal, and he kind of went above and beyond the, the call of duty to get the kid suspended. And then after that, he did something. He, did, he like destroyed some school property. And then got expelled for that. Ooh. After that, I didn't have any problems from that group of kids. Nice. So, no. Telling on bullies is absolutely the thing you should do. Yes. If they, is, yeah. I mean, seriously, that's like the first thing you should do if they're not letting up. Yeah. I mean, again, it goes, I, I keep referring back to the whole chain of events. If they don't let up, like you said, tell somebody. Tell an adult. And then work your way up. Tell somebody who has actual power to do something. Yes. You yeah, know. this just seems like laziness to me. Like, don't tell yeah. on other kids because then we would actually have to do something about it. Like our job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Don't don't make us actually do something, kids. I mean, you're 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 all uh, you're adults, right? I mean, you should know how to handle this shit. I mean, yeah, you know, we're only charged kids. with your health and safety and well-being and stuff, but, you know. Yeah. Don't make us work for it or anything. Oh, I know. Just go right. work it out on the playground. But don't retaliate. Don't retaliate. Just just let them, just let them wail on you. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Right. Uh, I'll be your friend. Yeah. And this also ties a little bit into rule number eight. Don't be a sore loser. No one likes a sore loser. Would you like to play with someone who gets ups- gets all upset when they lose? Lose gracefully and be a good sport. Kids will like you better. <sighs> That's right. I gotta love people who let you push them around all the time. I know, right? I... Now, now, see, this rule would apply to things like games. Because yeah, when you're playing a game, sure, yeah, that's fine. Bullying? No, no, it does not apply. I'm here. sorry, this doesn't apply to bullying. Thank you, sir. May I have another? No, that, that, that does not work. Does oh. not work. Ah. Oh my god. And the last rule, number nine, learn to laugh at yourself and not get hooked by put-downs. Make a joke out of it or agree with the put-down. For example, if you think I'm ugly, you should see my sister. You're right, and it's going to get worse. I know, I've known that for a long time. I think that's supposed to be known. God damn it, editor. Uh, yeah. I've... I know that for a long time. Yeah. I've known that for a long time. I know that for a long time. Oh, 
God, that was a bad voice. Well, if you're afraid, oh. ah, I've, I know that for a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. God damn. Thanks for noticing. If you think I look like a nerd, you should see my dad. Push glasses up. <laughs> <sighs> oh, now, now, see, this is the one I was talking about when we at the beginning of the list, because comedians have have grown up and they've been able to do things like this. So this is one of those. It can work with some people. Yeah, turn it around, turn it into a joke, take the piss out of the bully in that way. That that's. I find that a legitimate thing if you can pull it off. Not everybody can. Hell, I I mean look at where I am now and and what I'm firing out here on all three of my shows. I could not have done that in high school. (laughs) It's just – you know, I would be able to think it, sure, but bring it out, no, because it would be in my brain be like, okay, if I – if you know. If I do something, I would probably end up in worse trouble, and I didn't want that. I just wanted to get my ass to class. Yeah, and again, this is something that I could see working in like a high school setting or even like a junior high setting maybe. But again, and I don't want to undersell the intelligence of kids, but for fifth graders, no. This is kind of bad advice because like – yeah, unless you are really, really snappy and witty at your comebacks that can like – you can be self-deprecating and be clever about it. Then like say like a kid comes up to this this kid's like are you gay <laughs> fag and it's just like yeah uh, I am gay I'm the gayest gay who ever gayed <laughs> <laughs> fabulous totally although you know That's, what if I, I I'm probably not gonna work in their favor I'm just saying oh. <laughs> yeah no it's probably not <laughs> although if if it was me if I had the mindset back then that I do now and somebody called me gay or what have you. I would have been like, yeah, I am, and you look nice. I would have hit on him. <laughs> there was uh, this moment on Game Grumps where Ego Raptor was talking about how, as a kid, he got bullied for being, well, not for being gay, but people accusing him of being gay. And uh, he, he said he waited for the opportunity that never came after that, where he'd be like, are you gay? And he'd be like, why? You looking for a date? <laughs> yeah. That would probably be the best response ever. <laughs> yeah, I I, I, I I am half tempted because again, around here there are six small children running around, ages I think uh, nine down to I think two or three. And the older ones are, are are understanding different things, and I'm I'm tempted to teach one or two of them. Okay, if somebody tries to accuse you of being gay, you look at them and say, "Are you looking for a date?" <laughs> I am so yeah, tempted see, to do... it's like it, it, as an adult, I can find that humorous, but I also know, you know, gay bashing, and it's like, great, so they're going to be like, oh, well, you are gay, so now I'm going to beat the crap out of you. Yeah, that that's what that's what gives me the pause right there. Is it's like, tempted yeah. to, but, yeah, no, 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 no. Now, if they do that on their own, <laughs> then <laughs> you know, then you know, my hands are clean, but. But, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, and you know, like you could also ha- you know, tell them to preface it with like, "No, I'm not. Why? Are why? Why do you ask? Are you, are you looking for a date?" There you go. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, of course, there there does run the risk of some other homophobe bully to run into that bully and start that cycle over there, and eh, I would feel a little bad, even if it was from some because of somebody bullying me. You know, I, I would still feel a little bad. Uh, yeah. And again, I guess it comes back to the whole thing of young young kids don't really fully appreciate irony, and so just stuff like that could probably lead to a, just a greater misunderstanding and a greater ass kicking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so in the light of all of this, the school got got it's just blasted with outraged parents, as expected. Yeah, as we should. Yes, and they. They actually – oh, let's see. Okay. They have a Facebook page, Lincoln Public Schools, and they released a statement about this. It reads as follows. A flyer that contained inaccurate information regarding how to handle bullying situations was sent home with Zeman Elementary School fifth graders. Excuse me. Here are parts of the letter from the Zeman principal sent to families this afternoon to apologize and offer accurate information about how to handle situations. 
Our educators at Zeman Elementary School work hard to provide accurate and appropriate lessons and education for our students in how to handle bullying situations. God damn it. Put a comma in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> they don't believe in editing. Apparently not. Or educating, apparently. Well, <laughs> they're only a school. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. The flyer was sent home with good intentions. Unfortunately, it contained advice that did not accurately reflect LPS best practices regarding response to bullying incidents. We encourage all students and parents to continue to communicate with our staff if you have any questions or concerns about bullying situations. We apologize for any problems or confusion that has caused for students and families. And that was, me, that was my poor reading, by the way. That was not the article. We have added a link to our webpage where you will find the facts about bullying, which contains our best advice for parents. And they have a PDF. Let's take a look. Let's see. Let's see the difference. The difference here. Uh, how many pages? Okay, it's you know two. I, I just pages. love that the article calls this a far less shitty anti-bullying fact sheet. Yes. It's still not good. It's just less bad than the previous one. Yes. So, so let, let's let's look at a few of these uh, on this other uh, uh, flyer here. What you know, communication is important is the big thing here. The facts about bullying. Bullying is a serious problem that can lead to years of pain and unhappiness. It is a basic right for for a child to feel safe and to be spared the hurt and pain from being bullied. I can agree. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, bullying. It, it's one of those things where it's like bullying happens. It, it, it's 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 like rain. It's gonna end up happening at some point in your life, unfortunately, because I don't think yeah we can minimize it. We could be aware of it. We can learn how to deal with it, but in the end, I don't think it'll ever be eradicated, at least not in our generation. But no. But with that said, like I you know like I was saying, you learn how to deal with it, and and. You have to learn to deal with it in the best way. So what parents can do. Notice and talk about any changes in your child's behavior. The child might be that good at hiding it. I mean, and, and, and this is kind of kind of a little thing for me because, again, six children running around here. How do I know one of them is not being bullied? They just don't talk about it. And, and you, they don't give off any indication that something is wrong. Yeah. Kids do tend to internalize a lot of things. I mean, you know, no more, no, really no more so than adults, but when it comes to, you know, growing up and trying to find uh, a peer group that you fall in with, you know, maybe, you, you know, you, you see the bullies, you know, you, you fear them, but you see them also as being, like, powerful and having this, you know, a, a, lot, of, a lot more confidence. And maybe, you know, you, I don't want to say you aspire to be them, but you almost, in a way, sort of half-heartedly, do I don't know. I mean, it's been a while since I was in in elementary school, so I I really can't say. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Another one they have is ask if your child understands what bullying is and who can help. I find that I can consider that legitimate. Sure. Mhm. Mm uh, mhm. Mm ask your child how peers treat them. Again, this goes back. They could just internalize it, and they could they could lie just to just so they don't cause any more trouble. I could actually see my younger self doing something like that. So, you know. Tell your child that bullying is wrong and unsafe and that adults need to know if bullying is occurring. I can get on board with that. Yeah. Teach your child ways to talk it out, not fight it out. Again, kind of legitimate there. It goes back, again, back to my example of the, of the whole step process or what have you. Yeah. Because, fi yeah, fighting really... it. I mean, I'm I'm someone who pretty much avoids confrontation as as much as I can, uh, especially physical confrontation because I'd probably get my ass beat. But um, yeah, I mean, you you just yeah take it step by step, and if you know, and if you can talk it out and you know reach some form of understanding or you know get bring the bully to task for what they've done, then that's that's extremely helpful. And if that doesn't work, then Throw a punch, I guess. Yeah. Or take it to the media. Yeah. No, that, that, it's one of those two, definitely. There's there's a mm -hmm. reason why my my ladder has fight you know physical altercation after the media. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so let's see. 
teach your child to take action when they see others being bullied. Now that, that depends. Oh God, because on the one hand, I do want to encourage, you know, help somebody when they're in trouble. I want to encourage that. But at the same time, what if that ends up being more harmful than helpful? It's it's kind of a two-sided thing, at least in my mind. I mean, I don't know if either of you think that same way or. Um, well, I, I can sort of see where you're coming from, mm -hmm. but like the actual practice of it, I've never seen it be more harmful than helpful because in general, if a person is strong enough to stand up to a bully and say, hey, this isn't cool, don't do that, that's enough confrontation for the bully that they're like kind of thrown off and they don't know how to react to that. Yeah. You know, the only fight that I ever got into in high school was defending another kid. Well, there you go. Oh, yeah. And I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, there is sort of strength in numbers. And it really is, like, probably the best thing you could do to, especially somebody who's, who suffers from chronic bullying, is to stand up to the bully and say, like, hey, that's not cool. Stop doing that. And let, the, you know, let the kid know that they at least have somebody on their side. Yeah. Because that could really go a long way. Oh, yeah. And that actually ties into the next bullet point. Teach your child that there is safety in numbers. Oh, this this reminds me of a story my mother told me when she and her sisters were growing up. Uh, they were you know, they were walking to school like long damn time ago back – I think it was the 60s. And they would be harassed and bullied by a few kids just throwing rocks at them or whatever. And eventually they got sick of it. They complained, and so their older sister – older and bigger sister went along and nobody bullied them after that just the presence of a larger sibling who looks like they who looks like they could beat the shit out of you was apparently enough for these bullies to say uh uh no 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 we don't fuck with them they could call out the big mama <laughs> or in this case the big sister <laughs> Yeah. So intimidation can be a useful thing if, if used sparingly and used for good, obviously. Yeah. Uh, another one – this one's a no-brainer. Learn the rules and regulations regarding bullying and harassment at your child's school. Nah. They're usually in the handbook. Sometimes they you know, they have uh, different things for you. Um, uh, uh, assemblies. There we go. And contact a school staff member for assistance if bullying happens at school. Again, if if it's persistent and you've tried the things that are within the rules without resorting to violence and it's still the bullying is still happening, then you go tell the adult. So that yeah. I... and that actually sort of segues into a related article that I also wanted to bring up, which was a student ed a special ed student was reporting bullies oh my and was god. accused god, of one. felony wiretapping. Oh, oh god, yes. I oh, So if god. we want to talk about stupid and just asinine responses to you know, kids trying to stand up for themselves, this is unbelievably stupid. Yeah. Well, and to do that to a special ed student is just about as heinous as it gets. Yeah. Yeah, he he was um being regularly shoved, tripped, um and almost burned with a cigarette lighter. Mm -hmm. Um so he recorded oh, the abuse boys will on be his boys school issued and iPad. Whatever. <sighs> and his mom uh submitted the evidence to the school's principal. But instead of the other kids getting in trouble, they called the police who threatened the 15-year-old boy with felony wiretapping and then reduced the charges to disorderly conduct. Which he was found guilty of. That is what really pisses me off about it. And it's like, no, 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 no. This is not wiretapping. I, I think Pennsylvania, this, which is where this took place, I think they do have a, some bullshit law that says if you're going to be recording, all parties have to be notified or give permission or whatever. Which is fucking bullshit because let me guess, you could try and say that to a police officer and you could not – you could not rescind permission. I'm going to just guess that, but I could be wrong. However, this kid, you know, he he wanted evidence of bullying. And you know what? A school classroom is not a place where you're expected to have privacy. You are in no. a room full of people with a teacher at the front with desks 
the position in such a way that the teacher can look around the room and see the whites of everybody's eyes or the tops of their heads if they decide to lay their head down. Well, and calling recording the bullies disorderly conduct, what exactly were the bullies doing? What would you call that? Character yeah, I, I don't understand what, like, why this is a thing, you know? Because he recorded it because he wanted to prove that he wasn't lying about what was going on. He just wanted it to stop. Yeah. And, but no, he... he, he... The he's boys. infringing on he's infringing on the rights of those poor abusive kids who are making his life hell. Yeah, it, it it's making me think of of the whole Christian fundamentalist movement that are crying about gay rights taking away their religious freedom, and it's like, no, we're not taking away your religious freedom, you fuckers. And that's that's yeah. what the situation is making me think of. I, to, just to compare the two is like, ah. Well, and you made a really good point. I mean, this happened in a room with a teacher in it. Yeah? Like, the teacher is actually heard in, or was, because the school administrators deleted the recording. Yeah. But you could actually hear the teacher in the background yelling at them. Yeah. And and I don't know, I don't know what exactly the teacher was saying. I was, I'm hoping the teacher was yelling at the bullies to stop. Yeah, at the very least. That's essentially what it was because okay. one of the boys says, "What? I was just trying to scare him." Yeah, scare him by throwing him into a wall. Yeah, that's scaring. No, that's abuse. That is assault. You, not a, you know, you were assaulting the person. You're assaulting the wall. Neither of them deserve that abuse. You don't need. No, no. you just you don't do just, that. Just no. The, this that's that was my my entire reaction to this whole thing was just. Fucking no. Yeah, and so on far everything. Bull- yeah, and, and as I think we mentioned a little bit ago, the bullies thus far have not been punished. Why? What kind of message does that send to the kids at that school? Oh, you can like, oh, you, well, 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 you you can bully bully these special ed students, and then you can get away with it. Oh. I was like, what yeah, the if they fuck? try and retaliate, they're the ones that are going to get in trouble. So have fun, kids. Go wild! Uh, God damn it! I, I just can't believe that it's like they think that there's an expectation of privacy in a public school. Yeah, with a teacher in it, and it's like so they reduced the charge and said that it served no legitimate purpose. Um, I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah, because hi, we're trying to stop. I'm trying to stop being bullied here. You know, I have evidence here. Apparently, Can you stop this? Apparently you guys aren't doing jack about it, so I'm going to take matters into my own hands. Yeah, well, because even with all of that, kids never got punished. Yeah. The Which... only person who got punished is the kid who was getting bullied in the first place. Yeah, bullying the victim. The victim gets in trouble. Oh, God. Ugh. Nothing wrong with that message. Nope. GG, guys. Regroup next week. Yeah. Yep. God damn it. So I'm hoping the appeals record, court, um, eh, I can't talk, I swear. <laughs> I hope the appeals court reverses this decision because it is unbelievable to me that any judge thought that this was okay. Like, it, it, in what way would that have served no legitimate purpose? They wanted to stop being bullying, and so they got proof that they were being bullied. Mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure that yeah. would then serve a pers- purpose. Because the school didn't act on it doesn't make it the kid's fault. Right. I would blame the school on that one. Yeah. Be- you know, even, you know, beyond that one teacher that that is at least trying to yell at them to make them stop. Because I know teachers, generally their hands are tied when it comes to dealing with physical bullies. They... They can't put a lay a hand on a student, otherwise they run the risk of getting in trouble and losing their jobs. I can understand that, but and, yeah, they're they're least... trying to you know they're they're trying to run a classroom. They're trying to you know teach their students. They're trying to just keep things in order. Still, I mean, like you you are responsible for the safety and well being of these kids, and you need to do something about it. Yeah, and and this teacher, to her credit, I mean, yelling isn't going to do too much, obviously. But it's better than just sitting there doing nothing. You know? Yeah, just letting it happen. Is... Yeah. yeah. 
you know she she was trying within her power within her 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 bounds to stop it and and unfortunately it just sounds like it was one of those things that short of taking one of the bullies and defenestrating the fuck out of them which by the way defenestration for those who don't know that means throwing a fucker out the window it's one of my favorite words yes and it's not <laughs> and it's never in the spell checker dictionary what the fuck hmm. uh. Uh. Yeah, it's an awesome word. It needs to be in more spell checkers. But anyway, short of doing that, what could the teacher do? You know, and I'm pretty sure, obviously, at some point, the principal and vice principal were brought into it, obviously, because you know the kid took the thing there. So, I'm I'm laying in terms of the school, I'm laying the blame on the administration, the principal, vice principal, whoever it was that decided to call the cops. Yeah. Because oh my god, felony wiretapping. <laughs> You're making us look bad because we're not doing jack shit to make you feel safe. Yeah. Oh, that's just that reminds me of another story. It's 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 out of actually Tallahassee, which is about 80 or so miles from where I am. And I heard this 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 whole story. I may I don't remember if I've backed it up on anything or what have you, but there is there is this thing going around with uh, involving FSU, and the long and the short of it is, star football player is pretty much accused of raping a girl, and not only is he still, you know, he's still being like, you know, touted as the star football player or whatever or what have you, the police department over in Tallahassee dragged their ass to get all of the evidence, which was readily available. They had surveillance cameras. They had his DNA on hand somehow. I, th I think it was on her panties or whatever. They had all this evidence that they could use to charge and lock up this kid who did this really horrible thing, but they didn't. And, and it's just, you know, because at this point it's like, okay, you know what? You're, you're, you're treating him – you're putting him up here on this pedestal, and I think some, some bullies are on similar pedestals, not necessarily the – the football player pedestal it's it's the mindset of this person does this certain thing they can do no wrong even if they do something wrong and there is plenty of proof behind it uh, and you know it, it's going back to the, like steubenville maryville where it's yeah. the football players that are doing the horrible things whether it's just simple bullying to rape or whatever and they're getting away with it because they have such a bright future ahead of them i wouldn't be surprised if the two bullies in this story right here were similar you know they they're they're either you know they're football players some sort of athlete or they they're suffering from quote-unquote affluenza which by the way that word needs to be banned just flog uh, anybody yes anybody who uses that word unironically yes yeah it's just yeah uh, uh, you know, I'm willing to bet those those bullies in this story fall into one of those two categories. Oh, they could do no wrong. Oh, they they have such a bright future ahead of them. Uh, and you're just a special ed student. You're gonna have to ride the short bus your whole life. So I mean, like, what future do you have? I know, right? It's just oh god damn it, people. Uh, it's just there's just everything wrong rolled up into one. Yes. Yeah. And and and. and and as I've noted, it ranges from the elementary school, like we started out with that flyer, all the way up to the college we, with, with the football player. It's just, I, I ugh. What the fuck, Something schools? needs to change. Like, I mean, we need to start teaching our kids to be more respectful. We need to just call out bullying when it happens and just... Something. I don't even know what anymore. But something is very clearly wrong when shit like this is still happening in 2014. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, for first of all, okay, I, I can start with the Tallahassee one. First of all, take the Tallahassee Police Department, clear them out, replace them with people who will actually do their goddamn jobs – as opposed to, oh, drag ass because, oh, he's a star football player. It's good for our city's economy that we have good football players. We don't want it to be marred. Oh, trust me. You know, a, a, a good football fan, or, or at least I would like to think so. Maybe I, I'm giving too much credit to some of them. I don't know. I would like to think a good football fan would look at the player and be like, okay, that player is a dick, but you know what? You know, the team got rid of him. The team did what was right. The coach did what was right. 
we'll 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 let it you know I'll I'll still root for the team because the team took care of the problem. Yeah. Uh, but no, we're in the South where football is serious business, y'all. Uh, uh, because yeah, football is more important than you know some fucking kid being locked up for rape, and can be proven. To have raped somebody. That's what really gets me. Yeah. It's just... Ugh. It's like... It's like it's like Steubenville right in my own goddamn state. God damn it, Florida. Ugh. No. Yeah, well, to be fair, you live in Florida, so... Yeah. Oh, we're really? Supposed, we're supposed <laughs> to have... We're supposed to have the weird news. We're supposed to have the fucked up that's fun to laugh at. Not the fucked up that makes me want to drive over to Tallahassee and kick some people in the balls. <laughs> that, that, that's not the kind of stuff that's supposed to happen here at least not outside of government government is a whole different story <laughs> oh, god damn uh, this, is, this has got me raging this week holy shit oh, no, I, I feel you I, I, have, I have very little sympathy for bullies I mean I, I although I will, I will say this um when I when I was a sophomore in high school, there was this this kid who was on the ski um who I was on the ski team with, who really was kind of going out of his way to get uh, to to bully me and just single me out. And again, since he was kind of a star athlete, he didn't really get brought to task for it, and it really escalated. And uh, during like the state meet, like there was a lot of bad blood that got thrown around and. It was it was unpleasant, but later, after we graduated high school and you know went off to our separate things for a while, we met up again. And he, I don't think he ever actually said that he was sorry, but he he communicated with me in such a way that he was clearly sorry and that he was clearly repentant and that we're not like the best of friends, but you know we're we're acquaintances and you know if we see each other, you know we say hey, we chat for a bit and then go our separate ways. Yeah, and and honestly, that that is what I call a good ending. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's... yeah. You put me through shit in high school, but you know what? You're you're clearly repentant. We're, we'll be and all that, right. That, and that to me is like that that that's that's fine. Like I I'm I'm perfectly fine with bullies making amends with their with their victims and coming to some sort of uh, understanding. But until that point. Until you are the you decide to you know to turn face as it were and be you know make amends with this person, I don't have any sympathy for you. I don't really care. I mean, I, I feel bad if you if you have a, a a bad upbringing, if you have a horrible home life. That's not that's not fair. That's not right. You should you know you should you deserve better conditions. But you still you don't you don't get to take that out on other kids who did nothing wrong to you. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Uh. You want to talk to people about being the, you know, if school administrators want to talk to people about being the better, the better person, they should start with the bullies and say, like, look, just because your home life is unfortunate, I'm sorry, you don't, you are not allowed to take it out on other, on other kids. Yeah. You need help. Is something going wrong at your home life? Can we help you? Yeah. Can we protect your well-being and maybe make you feel a little safer and do something that'll stop you from tormenting other kids? Exactly, and I think that's probably one of the best attitudes to have for it. it. It's it's you know you know if there's some other underlying issue, deal with that. Maybe the bullying will stop because there'll be no more reason to bully. Yeah, but you don't. What you don't do is you just you don't say like just don't tell anybody about it. just just let don't don't bother us with it. Come on, come on, just just work it out, work it out. But don't don't get mad, don't get mad. Yeah. No, of course, because you never should show anger. Or even, I oh no, did love angry. some of the the comments on Facebook, um, uh, like the 1970s called. They want their flyer back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So yes. So, in 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 short, to sum everything up, because we're almost out of time here. Uh, when it comes to bullies, you know, again, this is probably going to be the last time this episode that I'm going to refer back to it. Go through the chain. You know, if you know, deal with them nonviolently first. And if that doesn't work, you know, tell an adult. If you know, and by adult I mean like your parents, school official, 
you know, you know, sometimes they have like the, the the officers around the halls or whatever. Tell him or her, you know, tell one of them. If they don't do anything, you go up to the next level. That would be the, like the superintendent of schools or whatever. If they don't do anything, you go to the police. If the police don't do anything or if they're ineffective, you go to the media. Now, those two right there, I, I think they probably could be switched around here and there depending on your circumstances and depending on how serious it is. And if neither of those two are effective, then the next time they try and bully you and, and – and of course, this would lead to physical bullying. You know, then you throw punches and beat the shit out of them, and say, "Bitch, I've done everything I can. I've had patience out the out the ass going to ten buck two. You've made it run out. Now you're gonna get your ass kicked." Or you pull a Casey Haynes and suplex them onto the pavement. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So with that. That is going to be it for this week. Uh, if we wanted to find Gonzo, where can we find him? You can find me on Twitter and Tumblr, both uh, Gonzo Link at Gonzo Link on Twitter and Tumblr. I also have a YouTube of the same name, and I also am in the Gotham High audio drama, along with uh, what was it? Uh, the abridged series of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Sweet. And where can we find Holly? You can find me all over the social media stuff as Gooky Gox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. Um, and my Facebook fan page, Holly Christine Brown, and over at Nerdvice. Yes. <laughs> and don't you still have a Etsy store? I do still have a Etsy store, and that is also Gooky Gox. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Gookygox.etsy.com. Yes. And Yay. if you wanted to find me, I am at gomer 21 X on the Twitter and on the Tumblr and my stuff is on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And if you wanted to toss money at us for, for helping with production costs and upgrades and, and different materials or what have you, um, just, just a little hint. I've, I've got a new uh, Gomer Play series. I've, I've done the recordings, and they're uploaded. They're just going live starting next week. And that was actually made possible by my patrons over on Patreon. And if you wanted to join Yay. in and, and help fund other projects such as this, um, patreon.com slash gomer21xx. And as an added bonus, if you want some really great artwork or a 30-second or a animation if you, if you give enough, then check out my girlfriend at, go, at – I was about to say my own thing again. No, but she <laughs> is over at patreon.com slash beckyhop. She's a really great artist, award-winning animator, by the way. And very Ooh. much, very much worth every cent you give her. Um, some examples of her work, if you want to see them, uh, my Pokemon Quartz run, and I believe uh, Steve McCool's latest review. I forget what the review is, but that is some artwork that Becky has done. So check her out again, patreoncom beckyhop to throw money at her for artwork or whatever. And that is it for me and us for this week. It's a little bit of a shorter show, but you know what? Those happen sometimes. We just we just run out of things, and we don't want to drag it on for too long. <laughs> Shorter, like what? <laughs> two minutes? Three? Actually, you're right. It is about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, guys! A short show. What are you gonna do with all this free time? Oh, I know, right? Short change for you guys this week. Oh yeah. Oh man, sorry guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is why I love my co-host, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so with that, we will see you guys next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link, signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.